literature of the Old and New Testament are inerrant, inspired, infallible word of God. Therefore, the final authority for faith and life is God's word. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about two of the next teachings. But let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get going. Heavenly Father, we love and honor you. We thank you for the anointing that rests upon this pulpit. God, let this word settle deep within our hearts. Let, us cha let it change us from the inside out as we realize we desperately need you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Uh, so the first teaching was about the Bible. The next teaching is we believe in the literal account of creation as recorded in Genesis chapters 1 through 3. Moreover, we reject the idea or theory of evolution, including what many refer to as theistic evolution. And there's real important why science just does not back up evolution. It does not make sense. And I'm going to show you that tonight. And I have multiple sermons on the YouTube channel that you can look at. And there's a lot of folks that are better than I am. Ken Ham, Answer in Genesis. He's a creation scientist. And he does the Ark Encounter in the Creation Museum. I'm going to show you today and give you the evidence that you need to understand that the Bible is not a fairy tale. It's not a list of embellished stories that it is the word of God and exactly how it said it happened in Genesis, maybe, you know, missing some detail, but exactly how it said it happened, it happened. The biggest thing I want to look at is if we can doubt the first three chapters of the Bible, then we can pick and choose what we believe throughout the rest of scriptures. So if I can say Genesis 1, 2, and 3 don't make any sense, I can get over here to Romans 1 yeah. and say, well, Romans 1 must not apply anymore. Yeah. Science emphatically proves creation. There is no doubt. Science proves it as we'll look tonight. Some Christians argue that what a Christian believes about creation, whether a literal account of Genesis or some form of, of evolution doesn't matter. When you discount the first few chapters of the Bible, you turn your Bible as a whole into a poorly written book full of embellished fairy tales. I mean, come on, when we pull the idea or the understanding that the Word of God is inspired and God-breathed, when you pull that out of there, you've got a poorly written book. The oldest book in the Bible is Job, and it's somewhere in the middle. You got first and second Kings and first and second Chronicles are almost the same thing. And, and then you look at the four different accounts of the gospel, but if we believe and have a worldview that, hey, listen, I'm going to trust God, and we go into it that way and, and really study the evidence of creation, we find that emphatically God said, let there be light, and, the, and then an explosion happened, not a big bang, and the sun existed. Amen. If the early chapters of Genesis are not true, if they're not factual history, then faith in the rest of the Bible is undermined, including its teaching on salvation and morality. Right off the bat, we hear salvation. The health of the church, the effectiveness of her mission to a lost world, and the glory of God are at stake. Have you ever thought, why? Most scientists state that the earth is millions of years old and the creation account of Genesis says something different. You ever pondered that? Why they push evolution and dinosaurs 
being millions and millions of years old and our children in public schools. I believe the key to understanding the motivation of most of what we see in here is to remember that Scripture tells us that as believers we are strangers, we are aliens, we are pilgrims, that we are not of this world. And also Satan himself, the greatest of God's creation, the most splendid and beautiful angel that rebelled against the Lord God Almighty is according to Scripture the prince and the power of air. Satan is the literal and absolute God of this world and he has a narrative to push. He is the father of lies and he's been lying. He's been lying, steadily lying since the beginning. A narrative to create fear and to get the world, including Christians, to doubt the accuracy of God's word. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the word of God is alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The word of God is infallible and it's true. And what happened, what it says happened in, G in Genesis is what happens. Now, if I were wanting to destroy a particular belief, <coughs> I would start at the beginning of that belief. I would start at the very foundation of where that belief happened. And this is what the devil has done with his attack on Genesis. He has Christians questioning the very foundational truths of Christianity found in Genesis. Darwin's theory of evolution is an atheist attempt to prove that the God of the Bible does not exist. Get that. Darwin's theory of evolution is an atheist attempt to prove that the God of the Bible does not exist. Listen to this. Why would any Christian give credence to this unprovable theory? Darwin said, this is what Darwin said 170 years ago, that eventually the theory of evolution would be proven. Yet today there is no quantifiable evidence that has been discovered. They cannot put anything together showing that an animal has evolved or changed. Tadpoles don't evolve, they become frogs. Caterpillars don't evolve, they become butterflies. There is no quantifiable, there is no evidence to prove this theory. If you want to truly change your mind about something, I don't need to just present opposing ideas. If I want to change your mind about something, I don't need to argue the facts with you. I don't need to state facts. All I got to do is plant seeds of doubt by asking you simple questions. Yeah. Did God really say? Mm -hmm. Does it really mean that society has changed? Does it really apply today? This has been the tactic of the devil from the very beginning. He strategically poses questions through his corrupt world system to create doubt concerning the sureness of the Bible. How about the dinosaurs? Where'd they go? How, about, how did Noah get them on the ark? What about the caveman, the Neanderthal bones found? What about the Tower of Babel, the parting of the Red Sea? Did David really slay Goliath? Did Noah even really build an ark? Where these true stories, where these true stories are just embellished myths. Darkness has been extremely effective with its campaign to get us to doubt the inerrancy of Scripture. In a recent poll conducted, 89% of professing Protestant Christians said they believed in evolution and not in the literal creation account described in Jesus. 89%. 89% of professing Christians believe in some type of evolution. <clears throat> 
Why do so many intelligent Christians believe in a form of evolution or what we call an old earth theory instead of the accuracy of the Bible? Let me, if you believe in evolution, then you believe the Bible is not true. There is no in between. So some people say, well, it's just God trying to describe things. It, uh, and trying to get it to where our minds back then could understand. We didn't have science back then. We have science now. God has always had science because science is a search for the facts. Before we even knew the world was round and we thought the world was flat, God said in Isaiah that the world was round. That's right. That's right. The Levitical law said to wash your hands before we even knew that bacteria even existed. The Bible is sure and true and accurate. Why? Why do Christians believe it? It's real easy. It's easier to agree with a lie than to research the truth. Yeah. It's just easier to go along. Go along to get along, right? Go along. I don't go along to get along. Amen. I go along with God, and I recognize a long time when I'm on God's side, I'm going to be opposed to the world. Sometimes I'm going to be swimming upstream. Sometimes I'm going to be going downstream a little faster than I want. Sometimes I'm going to be sitting in stagnant water. But one thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm always on the winning side. Because when all this is done, God is going to separate yeah. the lost from the found, the saved from the deceived. Yeah. And you're going one of two places. We send our kids to public school to learn the Bible cannot be trusted. Think about that. Yeah. We send them to school to learn the Bible cannot be trusted. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Just a couple bullet points. Man, I broke this stuff down for weeks. 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 I talked about this, and you can go back and look at them, and I can send you other videos. Evolution is a 170-year-old theory that has not been proven. Nothing, listen, listen to evolution. Nothing exploded and created everything. Amen. Think about how asinine that is. Think about how crazy that is to think that all of a sudden nothing existed, then it exploded. Who created the explosion? Right. Now, nothing can create anything. That's right. That's right. The Grand Canyon's a proof for a great flood. The Grand Canyon is proof for a great flood. When they begin to dig and they got all these shells and you begin to see different areas or different layers of animals in the Grand you see that all of a sudden a flood had to come. Back in 2018, they began to drill in Antarctica. You can research. This is all facts. They began to drill in Antarctica. They got down to about... Uh, 5,000, 5,500 years, and they begin to pull up vegetation. So they drill through five to 6,000 uh, uh, miles or five to 6,000 years of ice. They can uh, accurately count the ice grows this much every year. And when they got way down there to what they thought was about five to 6,000 years, they began to pull up what a tropical vegetation. Why? Because before God, before God destroyed the world with water, the entire world was the same. Yeah. It was one big, huge planet, a, a big garden. And there was a special garden that was excluded from the rest. But Antarctica had trees. It, it had swamps. It, it had animals. They got up on Mount Everest one time and they found fossils of a shellfish. How does that happen? Let me tell you how it happens. For 40 days and 40 nights. That's right. right. Yeah. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. You got shark bones, shark fossils in Wyoming. 
How did that happen? Let me tell you how it happened. God destroyed the world with a flood. Then he divided the continents. And then on the Tower of Babel, he separated mankind. Carbon dating proved incredibly inaccurate. Yeah. Just stop. Don't even work. They used to say it takes thousands of years for something to fossilize. And then they found fossilized bag of flour from the Civil War. They found a fossilized foot from the Civil War. That's not thousands of years ago. This is the biggest piece of evidence. How many people have ever heard of mitochondrial DNA? Now, we're getting pretty smart, and we're mapping DNA, mapping genes. You know what they figured out? Did all of us date? Did all of us, every one of us, go back to one woman, yeah. one ancestor? You know what the secular scientists call it? They call it the Eve gene. Yeah. Yeah. So when they back it all up, we all come from one woman. You say, well, Ron, we got all these different people. Man, it's really not that hard to explain. You got black folks, you got Caucasians, you got Aborigines, and then you got uh, Hispanic or Asian. You just got four people groups. And then when we see Jacob and Esau born, what Esau was dark headed, or was he? One of them was red headed, and one of them was dark headed. In studying this, there was a couple in England. They were a mixed couple. One was black, one was white. They had twins. One of the babies was black, one of the babies was white. Why? Because that DNA existed inside of them. Why do you think we're so sick today? Because the deterioration of the DNA. So that's what we believe. We believe in a literal account of creation. We believe that it happened just like it says it's happened because if I don't believe that, I can then begin to pick and choose yeah. things in the Bible that I don't want to believe anymore. I can say, well, sex out of marriage, that ain't no big deal. I can say homosexuality, that when God said that, it did, things have changed. We evolved. We changed. No, no, listen. God's word never changes. Yeah. It is steady. It is true. It doesn't adapt to our social setting. That's right. That's right. So that's why we believe in the literal account of creation. Amen. I said, Ron, how do you get those dinosaurs on the ark? <laughs> let, me, let me explain something to you. <clears throat> Number one, he's not going to put old dinosaurs on there. He's going to put young dinosaurs. At that time, every dinosaur, a young dinosaur, is about the size of a sheep. See, we got 19,000 different kinds of dogs. But back then, it was probably just one kind of dog. One kind of cat. You know? So we didn't have to load up all these cats and different cats and dogs. That's right. He said, well, what happened to the dinosaurs? What happened to him? Let me tell you something. In 1986, a dinosaur bone bones washed up on the Alaskan coast. And it had soft tissue in it. That means it can't be over 100 years old. And they found it over and over and over. The evidence is there. But see, if we're just looking at the, at, at the world's idea of evolution, you're not going to see that thing. But if you'll dig and you'll study, you'll find out that God is true. He is real. He really said, let there be light. And there was light. He really took some dirt in his hand and he breathed his breath into it. And we become a living soul. He really put Adam to sleep. And pulled a rib out of Adam and created the woman. Amen. Well, that's why the next teaching we believe in traditional biblical model for marriage and family. Last <clears throat> time I was studying this, I uh, discovered we have 76 different gender identifications. Listen, man. I'm about the easiest going. You want to do heroin, do heroin. You want help from doing heroin, get with me. 
You want to lay up with some dude, your dude, lay up with some. This is America. God gives you the right to do that. God gives you the freedom to do that. I just decided I'm going to live my life within the confines of Scripture. That's the way I'm going to live it. You got the right. You got the freedom. Do whatever you want to do. When you get down and so come to me, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm not going to throw rocks at you. I ain't going to tell you. I can't believe you would do that. I'm going to tell you that there's a God that loves you and can restore you. But 76 different gender identifications. I mean, what, 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 huh? <laughs> they didn't get, they changed their pronouns to they and there. Let me explain to you why. Because there's multiple people inside of them, just some of them are demons that are controlling them. Yeah. And then they come up with the two spirited, two spirit gender. Yeah, I, I, yeah, okay. Well, let's take a look at this LBGTQ. It's an attack of the enemy against what God created for himself, the family. And then we're going to take a look at a, a Harvard sociologist. He had a doctor degree in sociology. Cars in there. Genesis 1.28 said, Then God blessed him and said, Be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Ephesians 5.31 says, As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Listen, dude and dude can't make a baby. One of and woman can't make a baby. So the attack on the family is to keep us from creating a family because it is a family that honors God. God created this earth for us. He gave us dominion over it. We now share that dominion with darkness. We can control our circle, but we cannot control the world. Bad things are going to happen, and sometimes that sin is going to come over into our life. But what he's trying to do is to keep us from having kids and filling the earth. So let's take a look at some of these great civilizations that seem to just got lost. Rome, Greece, Babylon, Egypt. All became great by having strong marriages which produced strong families. But when the marriage began to fall apart, society fell. Our country has fallen into the same trap with the LBGTQ plus laws instituted by President Obama, his administration in 2015. This country is doomed to go the way of Rome, go the way of Greece the, and Babylon and Egypt if we fail to repent as a nation. So Carl Zimmerman, a Harvard University sociologist, 1947, studied the rise and fall of major empires in the world history and traced what happened to the family units in each empire. So what he started doing, he started pulling up ancient literature. He started looking at it. He wanted to know what these things have in common. It's like me. One of the things that I know, some things about addiction that I know, just about everybody that's struggling with addiction in any kind of way, there's a disconnect between that person and their father. The father's role is the most crucial role in the family. The father is the priest of the home. He is the protector of the home. He is the provider of the home. And our kids understand God by the way they, by our, the relationship they have with us. Yeah. Amen. So God's trying, the devil's trying to destroy the man. So you don't want to look what happened to all these civilizations. Where'd they go? I mean, think about it. Where did they go? They were great empires, ruled the entire, just about the entire known world at one time. His book, Family and Civilization, concludes that families go through three phrases. And in the third phase, before everything falls apart, this is what a family looks like. I've got about ten things. So before Rome fell apart, before Greece, before Babylon, before Egypt, before all these great civilizations fell apart. This happened. Marriage loses its role. 
Marriage is to provide a steady and secure emotional basis. And when marriage loses its sacredness and is frequently broken by divorce, the alternative forms of marriage are out. And, and then we see the alternative form of marriage advocated. <clears throat> Traditional meaning of marriage is lost. Alternative forms of marriage become socially acceptable. Like living together before marriage and gay marriage. Any organization that proposes the destruction of the nuclear family, one man and one woman married for life with the intentions on having kids and raising them according to the standards of God's word is an enemy of God. Feminist movement abounds. Listen, I love my wife. I honor my wife. But she understands that there is a role. There is a structure in the family that she understands she has to at times defer to my decision because God ordained a structure in the family. And that's not for me to lord over her. That's for me to serve her and to cherish her and to treat her like Christ treated the church to give my life for her to do the dishes when she don't feel like doing the dishes to help out with the laundry when she might not be feeling good. It is my job to serve God first then my wife. Feminist movement abounds. With the feminist movement abounds women lose their inclination for childbearing. Japan, Germany, and the Netherlands are really strong with the feminist movement. And guess what? They're depopulating. You know what depopulating means? You got more people dying than are being born. So when the woman's not ready to accept her role, listen, I, I'm for women working. I appreciate the, the number of housewives we have. I, I appreciate, I appreciate our women that work, that help out. I ain't saying there's anything wrong with that. But there's got to be a structure in the home if you're going to succeed in life. When stuff becomes so important that everybody has to work overtime to pay for stuff, something has got sideways. Yes. Before all societies depopulate, they all accept liberal family. There is an increasing public disrespect for parents. And listen, I, my, my kids have never disrespected me. They treat me with a weak me and Rachel joke. If I'm wrong, Rachel, she'll call me out. She'll say, Daddy, you know, you did that. And, and that's not disrespect. That's my, my, me and my daughter, me and my kids having a relationship where we can right. communicate. Right. But just disrespect. There ain't a snowball's chance in hell that any of my kids would ever disrespect me. Why? Because I demand respect. But in today's society, you got kids just blatantly disrespectful to their parents. This is one of the things that happens before the society caves in on itself. Increase in juvenile delinquency, promiscuity, and rebellion. Instead of supporting each other in complementary roles, and cooperating roles, men and women compete. <laughs> I mean, really think about it. Ten years ago, somebody would have told you that, hey, there's a dude that's going to call himself a girl and he's going to set all kind of women's swimming records. Amen. How many people would have believed that, right? How many, but, but we're seeing it. And this happened to Rome. It happened to Egypt. It happened to Greece. So we believe in the traditional family because God believes in the traditional family and we believe what God believes because God is the truth. Yes. The two genders seek to dominate each other. Instead of seeking an opportunity and justice, the genders radicalize, focus on secondary issues, destabilizing society and ultimately hurt people by placing politically defined demands on them and setting ideology standards for success. And you know what the highest rate of suicide is for, in, in, for a people group? People transgender. A higher percentage of them commit suicide than anybody else. You know what the highest occupation for suicide is? Doctors. 
you get a million dollars worth of student loans, you can't get caught up. Genesis 3, 16 says, Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you'll give birth. That's the first part of the woman's curse. The second part of the woman's curse, and you will desire to control your husband. So in a, in a woman's fallen nature, there is a desire for the woman to control the house, to control her man. And sometimes we need to be a little controlled. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> But it says he will rule over you. Listen, until Jesus came, let me tell you what women were. They were property. Yeah. They were treated as property. I was reading it in 2 Samuel about how David lost his concubines and then his son slept with his concubines. I'm thinking, a concubine, what is a concubine? It's a slave used for sex. But Jesus came and he said there's neither male nor female, nor green nor Jew or slave. He put us all on the same level. But being on the same level doesn't mean that we do not defer to God's ordained structure. Number seven, adultery is celebrated, not punished. I mean, you know, you watch TV shows and they keep account of how they're 16 and they're keeping account of how many people they've had sex with. It's celebrated. It's celebrated. People who break their promise to their spouses or succeed and are admired. I mean, come on. I think about the movie stars and the celebrities we watch. How often they, they give in and move to a different spouse. They're celebrated. Now listen, I'm guilty. I'm on my third marriage, so I don't want you to think that I'm some kind of hypocrite. I, I, I messed up. I, I failed. I miserably failed. But I believe in the power of God to forgive me and to restore me and to make it right. And when you look at my life and the mistakes that I've made and you really get to know Marilyn, you understand that God really does not hold any grudges that he will restore your family. Amen. An increasing percentage of the population, before they all fall apart, begins to engage in detestable sexual activities and homosexual activities. The fastest growing part of society to become addicted to porn are what we call tweens. Girls between 9 and 12 years old. They're getting addicted to porn at a higher rate than anything else. The, the, the porn, that, the most popular porn is anime porn. Why? Because kids like cartoons and kids are looking at porn. I mean, right here on this phone, I got my Bible out, my concordance, 50 biblical books and two buttons away. I can look at anything I want to look at. And now we got grandparents in their 70s raising 13-year-old boys with hormones. And you think, well, my boy wouldn't do that. No, he may not do that. But the guy he sits next to in class, he looks over there and looks at his phone. And there's some kind of little itch. And the devil's watching closely. Then he begins to throw fiery darts at that boy. And the next thing you know, your little boy's messed, is messed up as the rest of us. right. 2.5 million emails contain porn of sin to see. 68 million search queries related to pornography. 25% of total searches are generated. 2.5 million. I said that. I doubled that. This drastically increases the chance of kids being born to single mothers. Yeah. Listen. A kid needs their mother and their father. Yeah, they, they need them in their life. you got to have that structure. At Short Creek, we believe in the importance. I mean, I'm not going to turn you away because you've been married nine times. Who would I be? I'm going to accept you where you're at, just like where Jesus Christ done. Yeah. If you think your marriage is falling apart, I'm going to tell you straight up, God hates divorce. Amen. If there's fornication, we need to forgive and counsel and move on. We need to stay together. But when it, but the marriage needs to be saved at all costs. Amen. In 1940, 80% of adults were married. 
Less than 50% are married today. Take a second and talk, think about the atom bomb, right? You got the atom bomb. You split an atom. Atom is the smallest thing that we, we can measure is an atom. In our communities, we have families. In our churches, we have families. Several years ago, several generations in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, about the, about the same time that evolution got popular, about the same time they started teaching evolution in schools, all of a sudden the families begin to disintegrate. The families begin to blow up. What we have today is the result of the family blowing up. The devil destroys families. He's hell-bent on destroying families. Darkness wants to destroy the family because God instituted the family. Because the family brings honor to God. Because the family is God's way of duplicating himself. So the devil is hell-bent. So at Short Creek, we believe in the traditional model for the family. The Romans 1, 24 through 27 and 32. So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things their hearts desire. You know, when we begin to sin and God convicts us and we keep sinning, it gets a little easier to sin, right? But do something drastic happens. God turns us over. God needs that sin to bring us to the low spot because in the low spot we get broken and then we come and find God. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth of God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men as a result of this sin. They suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Verse 32 says, They know God's justice requires that those who have done these things deserve to die. Yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them. Number one, we believe the Bible's in error. We believe it's complete. Number two, we believe in the whole Bible, included Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And number three, we believe in the family. Amen. Short Creek is a strong church because we have strong families. Because you, you, you get it, the, the statistics about what happens when a woman comes to church versus a man come to church is, is crazy. When a man comes to church, about 90% of the time, the family follows. When the woman comes to church, only about 20% of the time, the family follows. Let me tell every man in here something. On judgment day, if anybody in your family hears, depart from me, you work of iniquity, it is 100% your fault. Raise your kids in the love of God. Love them. Teach them. Say no. Say no to temptation. Run from it. Be like Joseph. We need stronger families if this country is to survive. And I don't know what the future holds. I'm not a prophet. I know they said birth pains. I know it's supposedly going to get worse. I don't know. I, I know I'm just going to trust God. $10 a gallon. I don't care. $6 for a dozen eggs. It don't matter to me. God's going to provide. Right? Amen. I may only have three eggs, but instead of more, <laughs> I'll probably need to cut back on the eggs anyway. So we'll pick up in a couple of weeks and we'll be talking about the Trinity and why we believe in one God and three distinct persons and how that works together. I don't care how much I study it, I still can't wrap my mind around the Trinity. But we'll do that when next we get young ladies and their Rolling Stones and Mississippi State shirts. I like, those, uh, I like those pants. It's not Christmas, young lady. <laughs>
Thank Let's you. stand and worship with them. I open the altar for everybody. <coughs> Now I'm going to come to the table.